Okay. So I wanted to do a mixture problem since this is a typical type of problem that I hear questions about. How do you do this? This looks crazy, no, whatever. It's not that bad. Um, hopefully after you watch this, you'll see why. Mom, I'm gonna do one question and you could take this approach to any single one that you come across. But every time you see a mixture problem, you're gonna set up a table and the table is gonna help you organize your information. So you're gonna have three columns and the leftmost column is always going to be, oops, I, I always just title it amount, it doesn't really matter, amount in kind of total. Then your middle column is gonna be percent. And then the last one is gonna be amount of, and you know, typically it's always a percent of you know some kind of thing you're doing a mixture you want to have you know a combination of stuff to get like a com a certain percentage of alcohol or in this case a certain percentage of hydrochloric acid in the mixture so this last column is going to be the amount of whatever that is amount of alcohol amount of whatever solution in this case amount of hydrochloric acid i'm just going to put ha okay amount of hydrochloric acid um then there's always going to be, obviously, if it's a mixture problem, you're going to mix two things together to get something out of that. So, you know, I have two rows, three rows, but the first two rows are the things that I'm mixing. And the last rows, row is going to be the mixture. Okay, so this is my setup. I see a mixture problem. How do I know? Oh, I'm mixing this with this. Uh, what do you call it? Ah, sorry, hold on, let me fix that. I don't know why that happens. Um, I'm mixing this with this to get this kind of total, you know, percentage of a mixture and blah, 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 or anything you see like that, um, set up your table. Amount, percent, and then amount of blah, whatever the heck you want. In this case, hydrochloric acid. Three rows, because you're going to take two things, mix them together to get a final product. These are the things that I'm mixing, and this is the final product, the actual mixture, okay? Now let's input the stuff that we read. This is even before I write it, just knowing what a mixture problem entails. So a lab assistant needs to create a 700 milliliter mixture that is 7% hydrochloric acid. Um, I'll use different colors here just to make it easier to see. The assistant has solutions of, so these are what he has to mix. He has a 5.5% hydrochloric acid solution. And hold on, let me grab another color. And he has an 8% hydrochloric acid solution. So these are the two things that he can or she are going to mix together to create the 700 milliliter mixture that is 7% hydrochloric acid. And then find the amount of each solution, find the amount of the 5% of 5.5% solution needed, find the amount of the 8% solution needed, to create the mixture that is 7% and 700 milliliters total. So, all right, sometimes you guys will be told what variables you're gonna use to, um, you know, to create your situation. You're gonna create a system of equations. Obviously there are two unknowns. I wanna know how much of this 5.5% solution and I want to know how much of this, the 8% solution. Two unknowns means I'm looking for two equations. Okay, anytime you have a word problem, the number of unknowns that you have should equal the amount of equations created if you're actually trying to solve for those unknowns and find values. So if I have two unknowns, I want two equations. If I have three unknowns, I'm looking for three equations and so on and so forth. So I have two unknowns, that just like went crazy. <laughs> I have two unknowns, I don't know why that happened. I have two unknowns, so I'm going to look for two equations, all right? Now, let's first define these unknowns. So I'll use in green, right? We'll call X and Y, right? That's fine. But I'm gonna define my variables if they're not given to me. In this case, they're not. X is going to re uh, represent the amount of the 5.5% solution. 
Um, and then the 8% will represent with Y. You could use whatever variable you want, but typically X and Y, we're so used to that, we'll do that. So the Y is going to be the amount of the 8% solution, okay? I want to define my variables if they're not given to me, and I want to write it out in front of me so that when I'm actually at the end of the story, at the end of solving everything, I may have forgotten what those variables were, they're in front of me, okay? Um, sometimes you're asked for one part, sometimes you're asked for another part, sometimes you're asked for both pieces, but at least they're defined in front of me, okay? Um, all right. Now, let's set up the table. It's a mixture case. I know I'm going to set up my table. If my variables are not defined, I have to define them, but now I'm going to input stuff into my table that's going to help me create the equations that I'm looking for, that I need. I'm looking for two equations because there are two unknowns. So let's start. These are the two cases that I'm mixing together, right? I want this 7% at the end, but I have a 5.5% solution and an 8% solution. I don't know how much I need of each of them. Okay, so we'll let the 5.5% solution be first, 5.5%. I'm going to Represent, I'll put it as 5.5 because this is in percent, right, form here. Um, and we know that X is the amount of that solution. So the first row is representing my 5.5% solution. Um, come back to that for a second. And then the second row is going to be my 8%. Here's my 8% solution. And this is the amount of that solution, right? Amount of the solution, the percentage of solution. So let's finish that part of my table. This is the final mixture. And I want it to be 7% hydrochloric acid. So this is going to be a 7% hydrochloric acid solution. And I know that I want 700 milliliters of it. So the amount of this I know is 700 and we're in milliliters. So um, I hope you followed that, right? X represents the total amount of milliliters of the 5.5% hydrochloric acid solution Y represents the amount of the 8% hydrochloric acid solution. And I know that I want 700%, uh, sorry, 700 milliliters, and I want 7% hydrochloric acid. So this is the final product. And these are the two things that I'm mixing together to create that final product. Obviously, my table is not done. So, all right. Now, um, I have. Let's start with, actually, let's start with this one because I have the numbers, it makes it easier. If I have 700 milliliters of something and 7% of that is hydrochloric acid, then the amount of hydrochloric acid in that particular uh, volume, in that particular, let's call it container, the amount of hydrochloric acid in that is 7% of 700. And you know what, I'll maybe write it out here. Oh, sorry. So I want 7% 7 of 700. Now, how do you determine a percent of a number? You convert that percent to a decimal by moving the decimal place two places to the left, or you could divide it by 100 to convert it into a decimal and you multiply. So if I want 7% of 700, I take that 7%, change it to a decimal and multiply by 700, okay? whatever that is, right? Um, okay, so let's follow that same format for these. Now, I have X amount of the 5.5%. So I have 5.5% of X hydrochloric acid in the first one. Convert that to a decimal by moving the decimal place two places to the left or dividing this value by 100 0 0.055 and multiplying that by the amount, in this case, X, which I cannot simplify, 0 0.055 X. Same thing with my 8%, right? The amount of hydrochloric acid. Well, 8% of the amount here of Y is equal to, in this case, 0 0.08 times Y. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> let's do 7% of seven, so 49. All right, so again, this is the total amount, right? This is the amount of the 
5.5% solution, 5.5% of it is hydrochloric acid. So I'm doing 5.5% of the X. Change your percent to a decimal, multiply. Same thing here and same thing here. Okay, now, once my table is filled in, and every time you have a mixture case, it's always gonna be this way. Sometimes the total's unknown, sometimes these are unknown. You can change the unknowns, but the, the, the uh, process is very much the same. I need two equations now. I have to find two equations from my table. Here are the equations. Let me do it in, all right, we'll do it in black here. First equation comes from the first column. I know that X plus Y has to be equal to 700, right? The amount of this plus the amount of this mixed together has to be the total. The second equation comes from this. The amount of hydrochloric acid in the first solution, 0.055 X plus the amount of hydrochloric acid in the second solution, 0.08 Y should be equal to the total amount of hydrochloric acid in the complete mixture. So I created a system of equations and two variables, system of equations and two variables to solve this case. Now, there are three different ways that we can solve this. There's the graphing method, which is not advised when you have anything like this, the substitution method and the elimination method. To each his own, it just depends on which method you like. But what I'm gonna do is use um, substitution because I can easily solve, let's say for y, y in terms of x. If I subtract x from both sides, now that I know that y is equal to 700 minus x, I can take 700 minus x and plug it into y, substitution. So then I can create this equation of one variable where I'm replacing y with 700 minus x. I'm allowed to use my calculator so the decimals don't scare me. And now I have an equation of one variable, which now I can find X. If I know X, I can find Y and that's it. Then I just finish it off. So 0 0.08, so use your calculator if you need to, 0 0.08 times 700 is 56. 56 minus 0 0.08 X is equal to 49. Combine like terms, I have 0 0.055 plus 0 0.08 X is 0 0.135, so 0.135 X plus 56 is 49. Oh, I made a mistake. This is subtraction. Let me backtrack. This value is wrong. I want to take 0 0.055 X and subtract 0 0.08. So 0 0.055 minus 0 0.08 is 025. That makes more sense. Negative 0 0.025. Five. <laughs> cool. Solve it. Subtract 56, blah, blah, blah. Right? You want to isolate your variable. So let's go ahead and isolate my variable by getting all the terms with the variable on the left, all the constants on the right. Negative 0.025x is equal to negative 7. And that I'm going to do on my calculator, negative 7. And then divide both sides, right? Obviously, by negative 0.025. That'll get rid of the negative, which would make sense because I would expect X to be a positive number since it represents the amount of a solution. What is seven divided by? So, uh, <laughs> excuse me. Um, hold on, let me do that on my calculator. Negative seven divided by negative 0 0.025 is equal to 280. X is 280. Okay, I have X. Now I could find my Y. Let me go back and say, well, because let's come back to here. <laughs> y is equal to 700 minus X. But now I know that X is 280. So now I can find my, my Y based on my X and Y would be 420. Okay, cool. I have my X, I have my Y, but I went through all this stuff, right? I forgot what X and Y were. I want to answer the question that's asked. I don't want to just be like, well, hey, how much of the 5.5% solution do I need? And how much of the 8% solution do I need? And then I go, well, X is this and Y is that. Well, what the heck is X and Y? Which one represents what? You have to answer the question based on the question. 
But that's why we did this here. That's why we defined our variables. Because if we went through all this and we go, oh, what the heck was X again? I forgot. Well, now it's in front of me. I don't have to go back and really think about it very much. It's in front of me. So I can say that, actually I'll type it out and make my life easier. Now I can say that there, okay, hold on. cool. Uh, actually we're gonna go, we need um, 280 milliliters of the 5.5% solution, <laughs> excuse me, and 420 milliliters of the 8% solution to create 700 milliliters of the 7% solution. Okay. Every single mixture problem is the same thing, okay? They're all the same. It's not really crazy difficult as long as you understand how to set up the table. Once you set up the table, boom, here's equation one, here's equation two, and then solve it using whatever method you, you know, substitution or elimination, okay? If I were using elimination, then I'd have to, you know, I'd probably get rid of the decimals here and then, you know, get maybe a negative eight in front of a Y. To each his own, right? But um, it's not that bad. Set up your um, table. That's the, that's the main part. So you have two, right? These two rows represent the two things that you're mixing. And the last row represents the final mixture. Percent in the middle, the amount before, and then the last column represents the total amount of whatever the, in this case, hydrochloric acid, right? By taking the percentage and multiplying it by this. Take the percentage, multiply it by that. That's what goes in this column. Repetition, very rep repetitive. I can change what's unknown, but that's okay. You know, if I change what's unknown, then maybe this becomes Y and this becomes a number. So table makes it really uh, a lot easier, okay? And don't forget to define your variables if they are not defined for you. So these are the mixture problems.